All right, so we are here. I've ridden Axis now, which you can see behind uh, four or five times now, six times. I've lost count. If you want to introduce yourself real quick. I'm uh, Preston Kurtz. I work with SNS, and I'm the executive director of administration. Awesome. And uh, you guys have been working on this for about three years. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, we've had this prototype installed and running since the fall of last year. 2019. Yep, so we've pretty much done all the testing that we wanted to do, proof of concept, different variations and things. So now we have an amazing ride just right here in our backyard that we're able to let people come out and, and ride. And you've kind of hinted that you've been in talks with a few parks. You've hinted that excitement's been building, but you can't say who. Any future year predictions? Any 2022, 2023? You know, that'd be awesome if I could tell you that, but obviously we, we can't. You know, when we released the the teasers we did last year on Axis, and uh, we sent out some videos, and then we did the uh, layout that we released at IAPA. That obviously brought a lot of excitement, a lot of questions, and of course people want to talk about it uh, when it comes down to uh, when when the ride's going to open and who's going to purchase a ride and put it in their parks. That's something that we want to work with our customers to keep as confidential as possible and let them have the fun of releasing those details. Now, what was the major inspiration for this? I kind of felt like it was X2 type, you know, the 4D free spins going off of those patents. Um, they kind of hinted that it came kind of from there, but not really. What was the major drive for this ride? So we, we obviously are always trying to develop new rides and concepts. As you've seen, we've done the 4D free spin. We did built a, came up with uh, the ideas of different parts of that. We built up a, a prototype, tested it, and was able to let customers ride it. Ride so far on the 40 free spin. So uh, we always are looking for the newest, greatest, best thing. So we, we have a process that uh, allows our employees to help with those uh, developments and concepts. So this really came from an idea that was submitted by an employee. And he took that idea and analyzed it, researched it, worked it, changed it, tweaked it uh, to what you see now as far as the access coaster, which does utilize technology that we've been able to develop, um, as well as create new technologies. The, the ability to predict what this ride's going to do uh, is very, very complicated, and our team's been able to develop a, a proprietary process that really helps us design a ride and predict what those seats are going to do and, and develop a layout that, that does something that other rides aren't able to do. And it kind of feels like lately in the industry, we've seen a lot of companies copying other companies. Uh, the big one that comes to mind is Intamin copying RMC, you know, B&M starting to introduce these giant wave turns. It seems like you guys are one of the few companies that are still trying to innovate on your own. Is there a reason that you're not snagging elements from other companies, or do you plan to integrate some of the elements that we've seen from other companies' designs? Well, you know, we have a, a couple individuals that do our track layout, and those layouts, I would say, are quite unique in regards to some of the other rides that are out there. There are, there are, with certain types of coasters, a limited number of things that you can do with a ride. You can only bank so fast, turn so fast, go in certain directions. This ride opens up that door to, to things or layouts or elements that you can't do on another ride. So, yes, we'll always look to do something unique, something that differentiates us from our customers or for our competition so that our customers really Everyone's trying to come out with the, the newest, greatest, best idea, and we'll always strive to do that and, and try and do those type of things. But when you talk about something unique, you know, there's only so many elements you can do. The, the options are almost limitless on this. You, you change your speed, you change your direction, you can go over the top of yourself. Go, I mean, there's so many things you can do. There's obviously limitations that we have to follow within code requirements and the accelerations that are there. And we, and we do look at that in every layout. And now the IAPA video was a lift hill. This one's obviously a launch. Um, we kind of spoke before, but can you go over the options that parks will have? Sure. So the reason we have a launch here is really due to uh, small space, hyper strength. You can hear an airplane taking off right next door. So we have a, an airport right here. 
but we have uh, height restrictions that we have to work with. So we needed to get up to speed to be able to test the elements of axis. So the best way to do that, we use, utilize our air launch technology. So that's why you have an air launch here. Uh, that air launch is specifically just to get us up to speed. Uh, it is an amazing part of the ride here, but it's not anything that we needed to test. But it does validate for sure that we can do an air launch with this type of ride, we can do an LSM, we can do a chain lift, we can do all those types of things based off the customer's desires, wants, budgets, needs, but we, we can do all of those things. And as far as affordability goes, we've seen you guys put in smaller versions of your swings at some parks. Mm -hmm. Are you going to have a more affordable, a smaller version of this for some of those smaller parks that might want something intense like this but might might not have the multi-million dollar budget that a sure. normal attraction costs you know there's always those different options on almost all of our rides you know with our tower rides you can see something that's uh, 80 feet tall and you can see something that's over 300 feet tall and that is it really is based on the customer's needs and desires and budget similar thing here if, some, if the customer wants to have a ride that has a certain throughput a certain length a certain amount of time on the ride those are all variables that we work with our customers on. We don't necessarily have a set, you can only buy this ride. Because, but we can do different variations of things. Besides limiting factors of maybe your length of train. Um, but besides that, we can, we can do a lot of different things. Someone could do a, an 800 foot ride if that's what they want. Um, we just have to take into account the implications of, of doing something like that versus a, a ride that's 3,000 feet or 2,000 feet. And so, and it all can vary. Custom layout, custom train length, those are all options they can choose. And have you guys kind of figured out the limits of the train length? The animation, I believe, had 12. Um, this one, obviously, is just running the dual. Have you guys figured out, you know, can we put 12, 14? How many can yeah, we, we put we on? we put all those options. We haven't defined that necessarily, but 12 is obviously something that we put out there, something that we've analyzed a lot, and that, uh, that, that was really advertised. But there's, there's other options that are out there. Awesome. There is some variances though. On some trains, we can just add vehicles. We can add a coach, uh, and we can add four people and four people. You know, we have to look at the the hitch loads and what happens to the hitches and the loads that are there and the launching and all those elements because that impacts your train. We can't just add a uh, a vehicle and not take into account the impact on the rest of the ride. Of course. That being said, this ride does uh, is impacted by the speed. Of the ride and the elements that are going on and so for us to predict and have the speed seat spin in a certain direction we can't just unnecessary just continue to add vehicles and not analyze what that impact is of course and any other general information you'd like for people to have about this before we start seeing them pop up in parks i think the biggest thing is you know this ride's like nothing you've ever experienced before it's it's the closest thing to flying on a coaster that you can get it's it's an experience that um, you not only are going to see from the ground and say that is something unique, that is something different, but it's something you've got to go ride to experience. You can look at so many different videos and so many different things on it, but until you're on it, you really don't get the picture of what it is like to experience. And I can definitely attest to that having watched every other video that has been put out about this over the past couple months. And that first launch, when you come up over that first loop, it is, it is wild. So thank you again for having me out. I really appreciate it. I appreciate your guys' time. Thank you. Have a good day.